In this tutorial, we're going to build a simple compass. If you've started with the Where is North template and saved it as Where is North, most of the user interface is already provided. For example, we have the canvas here. On the canvas, we have this blue arrow, which is an image sprite whose picture is set to arrow.gif. We've got two labels up here, one to report the orientation. This will be a number from 0 to 360 and one to port, report the phone's location. And this will be the latitude and longitude of the device. The basic idea is we want the arrow pointing always north, and we want to synchronize it with the orientation center. That way, when the user points the arrow towards the top of the screen, they know that will be north, and off to the right will be east, off to the left will be west, and behind the user will be south. So let's begin by pulling an orientation sensor out onto the viewer. Now the orientation sensor reports three values, phone's roll, its pitch, and its azimuth. The roll and pitch determine how it is tilted in space. We're concerned about the azimuth, which, uh, as it says here, is zero degrees when the top of the device is pointing north. Okay, so uh, the next thing we want to do is pull the location sensor on the app. The location sensor reports the phones or the devices uh, latitude, longitude, and altitude. The two values we're interested in are the latitude and longitude, which we will display here. That pretty much completes the user interface. Uh, let's now go into the coding of the app. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check the device's orientation and set the value of the label to the current orientation. So as you see, the orientation sensor has only one event handler and it is invoked whenever the phone is moved in space. So that's very, very frequently, many, many times a second. Uh, what we want to do initially here is we simply want to set the text of the label to the current value of the azimuth. Okay, so we're going to get the azimuth and we're going to set the text. Now that'll just display a number between 0 and 360. The other thing we want to do is we want to adjust the position of the image sprite. In fact, we want to adjust the image sprite's heading. Which direction is it pointing? But rather than simply setting it to the same value as the azimuth, what we need to do is we need to add 90 to the azimuth. And the reason is that the image sprite's value is 0 when it's pointing at the right of the screen, and the orientation sensor value is 0 when it's pointing at the top. So the, we want the image sprite to adjust by 90 degrees. By adding 90 to the orientation sensor's azimuth, we can get the image sprite, the arrow, to point to the top of the screen when the orientation center is saying that we're pointing due north. So let's test the app now. Uh, connect to the companion. We should see the app starting up and the arrow changing its direction as I move the phone. And you'll see that when I have it at 0 or 360, which are the same thing, then the arrow is pointing directly at the top of the device. So that's that part of the app. So now let's work on the next part. Let's display the values of the location sensor. So the location sensor has a couple of event handlers. The one we're interested in is the one that reports when the location is changed. And as you see here, it reports three values, latitude, the longitude, and the altitude. The values we're interested in are the latitude and the longitude. And really all we want to do is set the location label to display those values. So I'm going to set it location labels text, but I'm going to use a join block from the text drawer to join together various values. I'm going to put in the latitude and I'm going to follow that with the letter N because that's the number of degrees north. And then I need a couple of extra slots in my join for the longitude. So there we go. And I'm going to get the longitude here and I'm going to label that West. Notice that I'm putting spaces in these text strings so that they don't get scrunched together with the latitude and longitude values. So let's test the app again here. You may not see the location change because 
It depends on whether you're outdoors and you have a good fix on your GPS, which I don't currently have here at my desk. But if you do take the app outdoors, what you should see is that it should display the location in Latin long there. That completes the main part of the app. But if I bring up a copy of the completed app, we see that we have another task remaining, and that is to draw the directional signals N, E, S, and W along the top, right, bottom, and left edges of the canvas. And we want to draw them in such a way that they're centered along those edges. What makes this problem challenging and interesting for app designers is that our app has to work on any size device. So for example, a smartphone could have a, a screen that's 300 pixels wide and 500 pixels high. But a tablet could have a screen that's 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels high. Our app has to work on both size screens. So what we want to do here is we want to think about this problem in terms of abstract properties of the canvas, such as its width and its height, rather than thinking about it in terms of concrete values, such as the exact number of pixels wide and the exact number of pixels high. The reason for taking this approach is that the width and height will vary. It will be small for smaller devices and large for larger devices. But because it can vary, it can cover all kinds of devices that our app has to run on. So that's the approach we're going to take. If we return now to the blocks editor, the first task we have to figure out is how to draw letters on the canvas. So I'm going to go into my canvas drawer and look for a drawing block that will allow me to draw text. And here we go. This is the one we want. Notice it has three parameters. It has a slot for the text we want to draw. And I'm going to put the letter N in there. So this will be the letter we want to appear at the top of the screen. And then we'll figure out in a moment what to put in for X and Y. But before we do that, where do we want to put this block? What event handler should this go into? And the answer is we need to do this when the app first starts up. Unfortunately, App Inventor has a block specially designed for that purpose, the screen initialize block. This event handler fires once and once only when the app first starts up. So what you want to put in here is any initialization operations that have to be done for your app. In this case, those consist of drawing these letters on our canvas. So I'm going to plop that right in the screen one initialize block. So what value should we place in here for the X and Y coordinates? Remember, the problem we're trying to solve is we want to place our N on the canvas so that it's centered at the top edge of the screen. It should work for any size device. Before we try to answer that, it might be useful to remind ourselves of the characteristics of the canvas. So the canvas is a coordinate system with its origin at the top left corner. It grows positively in the horizontal direction from left to right, and it grows positively in the vertical y-axis direction from top to bottom. Two important properties that the canvas has, it has a width, which tells how many pixels wide it is, and it has a height property, which tells how many pixels high it is. So with that information, what values shall we pay, put in x and y to center the end? Okay, so now that you've thought about this, hopefully you came up with the idea of using the width of the canvas. We want to get the canvas's width property, and we want to divide it by 2, and that will bring us halfway across. And we're going to use that value for the x coordinate here. For the y coordinate, we're just going to use the value 20, which will bring us a little ways down from the top edge of the canvas. There we go. What's nice about this solution is that it works in all cases. No matter how wide your screen is, width divided by 2 will be halfway across. In that respect, it's a nice example of abstraction at work. Instead of using a constant like 150 here, if our screen is 300 pixels wide, we've used a more general, a more abstract solution, and that will make it work for any device, no matter how wide it is. So that's how we draw our end right in the middle of the screen, no matter what device we're on.
I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out how to draw the E, the S, and the W along their respective edges on the device. So good luck.